That building behind me, the orange building, was the former Callanan Mortuary. Here's a here's a uh, their matchbook, and you can see it. It looks the same as it did then. Now the Callanan Mortuary left this location and moved over to Glendale. It still does exist, but it was it was still a funeral home until about ten years ago. But these are the people that handled Divine Harris Glenn Mills statue died in 1988 uh, over on Hollywood Boulevard, and uh, and Shalimar, who was uh, Kenneth Antisone uh, Suyi, who was mysteriously uh, fell off the top of an apartment building shortly after he was busted with Eddie Murphy, and uh, and then. Bing Crosby was handled here. He was shipped here from uh, Madrid when he died and handled here. And there was a scandal because someone in the, uh, that worked for the mortuary took a photograph of Bing Crosby and sold it to the Enquirer it was published. And that was quite scandalous. But this is now a, uh, a uh, sort of a shelter place for uh, uh, homeless youths. And, uh, but this is it, former Callanan Mortuary. Behind me is a building that you can see is it's all different psychedelic colors. It's been painted to resemble the Aquarius nightclub that was here back in the 60s and Quentin Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood painted it just like it did in the 60s. Now originally in 1938 this was called Earl Carroll Supper Club and Earl Carroll was actually a producer and he did uh, uh, it was it was scantily clad women and in fact his motto was uh, through these portals past the most beautiful girls in the world so this was like a uh, you know it was supposed to be an upscale kind of girly bar and uh, Earl Carroll himself was an interesting guy and he he got busted and spent time in prison for uh, for uh, breaking laws regarding alcohol production during the uh, during the era where they banned alcohol uh, prohibition when this closed, it became the Moulin Rouge Club for a while. And you could see Frank Senez uh, opened this club as the Moulin Rouge. And then it went through a couple of different incarnations as uh, the Hullabaloo, and it became the Kaleidoscope for a while, then the Aquarius. Then the Nickelodeon uh, production company had this until uh, it closed, I think, in 2017. And as you can see now, uh, it's going to become part of condos, Earl Carroll condos. But they have, as I understand it, re restored the actual Earl Carroll's theater within it that will be open to the public again. But so this matchbook is for a place called the Hollywood Ranch Market. And the Ranch Market was a 24-hour, we never close, literally a market that stood just across the street over there where that little Office Depot, El Pollo Loco uh, strip mall was, uh, is now. But the Hollywood Ranch Market was there, opened originally as a place called the Mandarin Market, and that closed after a couple of years, then it became Hollywood Ranch Market. It was just one of those go-to places everyone went to from the 50s, 60s, 70s, even up to the 80s. I'm not sure exactly the year it was destroyed, uh, but I do know it was showed up in tons of movies and TV shows and it was a real uh, a real iconic place here in Los Angeles and now it's gone forever. Now this place where I'm standing now uh, is the Taglian Cultural Complex. This stands in the place where the Competition Motors used to be and Competition Motors to me in my life was uh, most important. This is where James Dean picked up his car the morning uh, the morning he was killed and he actually he and his his father and his uncle Marcus and another uncle uh, I forget the other uncle's name, uh, we're with Jimmy, and Jimmy was giving him rides around the block in his Porsche. And before they, uh, they left Los Angeles, he went over, walked over to the ranch market and bought, a, uh, uh, I think it was milk and a donut, which Jimmy's father paid for. And there's a great picture of Jimmy and his mechanic, Rolf, Rolf Wuthrick, I think was his name, uh, parked actually right here. And they're holding their, uh, their hands up together in sort of a victory symbol. And there's, there's nothing here that really resembles uh, the way it did back then. There's one thing you can pick up in that picture, and if you look at that pawn shop that's boarded up, and that won't be there for very much longer, just the corner of that little pawn shop shows up in that photograph, and that's all we have left from the 50s in this corner. The Farmer's Ranch Market, Competition Motors, and there's a corner of a building you'll see in the distance in the picture I'll post here. The original Brown Derby restaurant, the one that everybody recognized because it was, uh, it was actually shaped like a bowler hat. The original uh, Brown Derby restaurant stood about a block from here, then eventually it moved to this location. And in 1980, uh, it closed down and 
you could see the bowler itself was rescued and now it's the top of the strip mall. It's one of those things, it's like, well, at least it exists. And I know that the Hollywood Heritage Society, uh, that was one of their first projects is they saved the bowler and, uh, and they moved it to the top of the strip mall where it's now a Korean uh, karaoke restaurant. But uh, this place was really iconic because it was right across the street from the Ambassador Hotel in the Coconut Grove, which you're gonna see next. All right, in 1921, the Ambassador Hotel was built, and these are a couple of matches that I've collected over the years, uh, different sort of incarnations of the Ambassador. This is my favorite one. Uh, and inside the Ambassador Hotel was a famous nightclub called the Coconut Grove. And that was uh, demonstrated in a lot of movies and uh, uh, most famously the aviator they did a spectacular job and towards the 70s this was the incarnation it looked like their logo anyway the stuff they used now in 2005 the ambassador hotel it actually closed in 1989 in 2005 the hotel itself was demolished and in its place is the robert kennedy high school which takes up the same same space and mass as the old ambassador hotel did and uh, this famously is where uh, Bobby Kennedy was shot in the pantry in 1968 and uh, died about a day later. So uh, they destroyed the hotel. Somewhere in LA they say the pantry still exists in storage and, uh, and they built a high school in its place. And I believe the front entrance is the same. That little curved, there's a curved area just to the right of where the Coconut Grove was. The LA Unified School District promised when they sold it uh, or when they bought it that they would keep the grove up and then they said no we won't and they tore it down and uh, but the grove took was sort of that mass at the beginning or at the front of it but if you look closely to the right you'll see the uh, that sort of circular area where the famous clock was of course you can't see it because it's a school and they won't lay anywhere near it We're at the base of the building of a building called a residential building called the Gaylord, and behind me is the HMS Bounty, one of my favorite restaurant bars in Los Angeles. And the Bounty actually uh, has been around since '62. Uh, originally, the place it takes up was called the Gay Room, then it was called the Secret Harbor and the Golden Anchor. But in 1962, it became the HMS Bounty. And I hate to call it a dive bar, but it is a bit divey, it's a bit rustic, and it's wonderful. And they say Jack Webb used to go here after filming uh, Dragnet, because uh, they even have a booth named after him here. But this is a classic old Hollywood bar. So this is kind of a difficult pack of matches to see, but it's from Perino's restaurant. And Perino's, the original location was 3927 Wilshire Boulevard. And uh, that would be uh, right here. Now this is the one that you saw outside across the street in the movie Sunset Boulevard. When, uh, when William Holden is being measured up uh, at the uh, tailors for a suit uh, uh, the Vicuna, if you remember that. Uh, actually, the, the store, uh, the tailor would have been right about there. Because right outside the window behind the tailor would have been Perino's, the original location. But we're going to go to the last existing place that Perino's stood. This is the last incarnation of Perino's restaurant. And Perino stood actually on this lot. And uh, that was a big deal when I first moved back to Los Angeles, uh, when they tore down Perino's, that was a big deal. And we kind of scoured around the ruins quite a bit. And uh, we managed to liberate one of the columns from in front of the restaurant. And in its place are the Perino apartments. And uh, it was distinctive because it had this like green sort of aluminum sort of uh, archway, which they've, this isn't the original one, obviously, but they made it look like this. That, and, uh, and I think that those Perino's letters at the top may be from the original restaurant. But you can see they've mocked up the logo that's on these matches over to uh, sort of a purple one just there on the side. So this is where the last Perino's restaurant stood, which showed up in Chaplin and Mommy Dearest and I believe American Gigolo as well. Behind me is Club Lingerie. At least I think it's still called Club 
at least I think it's still called club lingerie, lingerie. And uh, oh, this is by, by the way, this is my social distancing equipment, so it doesn't look like I'm wearing a dicky ascot. So, um, so anyway, Club Lingerie was responsible for a lot of acts uh, performed here, really got their big starts here, like Jane's Addiction and Chris Isaac and Guns N' Roses. And, uh, and here is a, uh, a matchbook from Club Lingerie. The original Club Lingerie closed in 1995, although this may still be called the Club Lingerie. Are you liking my little matchbook tour? The next matchbook is the Dresden Room. The Dresden Room opened in 54 and uh, it was featured in a ton of movies, Swingers, That Thing You Do, and uh, Mad Men, Anchorman, and it's just this really fantastic uh, mid-century bar inside and uh, Marty and Elaine are the two lounge singers that have been there forever and uh, they showed up in Swingers too and you can still see them there just do it quick all right so in my hands now is one from the Florentine Gardens now the Flor this is not a vintage matchbook this is something that uh, I'm not sure what year that came up this came about but it is in my matchbook collection and uh, I don't want to wander around the Florentine Gardens right now because because you're not going to believe what Hollywood looks like right now but this is the Florentine Gardens coming up on my left it, and it what's really wonderful about this place is that it still looks much like it did and this was another uh, sort of supper club beautiful women kind of thing uh, one of, I guess they say, Elizabeth Short, the Black Dahlia, one of her last homes was back behind it. Yvonne DiCarlo worked here as a showgirl. And when Marilyn Monroe got married when she was 16 years old, her first wedding reception was held here at the Florentine Gardens. So it's kind of a miracle that it's still here. And uh, although a bit worse for wear, and actually they put a fence around it now so you, you don't have people camping in front of it. But, uh, but it is still here and it's still an active nightclub. You can see this one is a Vons supermarket. Now this is a vague Vons supermarket uh, set of matches, I'm sure. But a former Vons, now pavilions, still owned by the Vons people, uh, is just right across the street. So there's a Vons. <laughs> But now we're going towards Paramount Studios. Paramount Studios. Back when Paramount Studios actually gave out matches, you could see the famous Paramount Studios gates on the other side. And if you look over there, there are those gates. Now this is the very quiet section of Melrose. Hardly any traffic around here at all. But Paramount has been on this lot since 1926. Now there was an entire city block in front of that, between that gate and where we are right now. And in the 80s, Paramount purchased it and knocked it all down. Eventually they have huge plans to build there. There was a restaurant called Oblath's that was on that lot too. And this was a famous sort of drinking hole cafe. And they say that a lot of the people that worked at Paramount on their breaks would come over to Old Blast. And it was actually just to the left of the gates where you see those hedges over there. They say Robert Reed would get pretty tanked there in between um, after filming episodes of The Brady Bunch because he hated it so much. And on the other side, you're going to see where the Nicodel was. That's where we're going now. Nicodell's restaurant stood right where those hedges are now. That's where William Frawley and Desi Arnaz met for the first time when he offered William Frawley the job on I Love Lucy. Now here's a bit of trivia for you. Next door to where the Nicodell was, that building that you see right there, that was uh, 
that was Columbia Studios in the movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So when Brad Pitt picks up Leonardo DiCaprio and they get into that car and drive past what is the, what was RKO, I guess at that point, uh, or Desilu, because it was RKO originally, then Desilu, and now it still it belongs to Paramount. But Cliff Booth picked up Rick Dalton there. He came out of those doors, got into their car, and then they drove past all those posters, which were put back to be vintage Oliver and Funny Lady and the Wrecking Crew, which featured in the movie. And I call it the movie. Thank you guys for joining me on my first matchbook tour of Los Angeles. Uh, I want to thank some people who are sponsoring the page. Uh, Patreons, Buddy Mills, Chiming In, David Hopkins, David Waymack, Don Mentz, Great Scott, Guy Selga, Jeff Kidd, Marnie, Mary Lucas, Melanie Bunnell, Nancy Bright, Pam Maddox, Sarah Weaver, and Steve Valley. Uh, thanks very much for sponsoring my work. Uh, the Patreon link is below. And please tell your friends and subscribe. And until next time, thanks for joining me.